Hey, John here. Let's talk about how to represent signed binary numbers. Uh, obviously, you could pick any one of a number of different ways. It turns out that if you choose this twos complement method I'm going to discuss here, uh, you, be, you will be able to benefit in various ways that will result in simplifying what, how to add and subtract their values and things like that, as we will see as we proceed. So what do we do here? Um, the uh, simplest way I know of to think about this is when you create the place values for each of the bits, you simply negate the one on the left. The most significant bit, the MSB, as I say here, you just negate that one, all right? So let's look at some quick observations in here, right? Um, number one, if you use this format, the bit on the left, the only way I can have a negative value represented this way is if there's a one in the most significant bit. Some people uh, will, will call that the sign bit. I do that occasionally myself because it kind of like represents the sign of the number. But keep in mind, it also represents this magnitude here, right? That negative 128 is what this particular sign bit represents. If there were only uh, seven bits in this binary value, then this column here wouldn't exist at all, and you'd go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and you'd have a negative 64 for the most significant bit if there were only seven, and so on, down to 3, 4, whatever, however many bits you want. The left one, you just simply negate like this, right? So as I show, for example, if I want to represent a negative value, negative 1 in decimal, uh, it would look like this, all right? You just simply set every single bit, all right? A quick brain check of that, add them up. Negative 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, each one of the face the place values, add them all together, you'll get negative 1, all right? What is, uh, what's this thing over here mean, right? Well, we talked about that before. The only way to have an odd number is to have the least significant bit set. So that still holds true. Negative 1 is odd. The only way to have a negative number is to have the most significant bit set in a signed 2's complement number, because there are other kinds of numbers as well. But in this encoding, these rules all apply, and they still work for negative numbers as well as the positive ones that we saw before, or more accurately, what I showed you before were simply unsigned numbers, all right? All right, so what happens here? Uh, as I note, uh, this uh, using this format is the virtue that the same addition logic is used that we discussed last time, whether we're dealing with signed numbers or unsigned numbers. And that's a huge win, right? You, whenever you can reuse something, that means that, you know, especially if it's in hardware, it's less stuff you have to build and rebuild and pay for and less stuff that uses power and less uh, transistors means less silicons used. In every way, shape, or form, you're saving money if you can reuse your hardware. All right, then you're saving time of development if you can reuse software. But where hardware is concerned, you have to pay for tangible physical goods every time you make a copy of the thing, unlike software, right? And this is a huge win if you can get rid of gates in your hardware. Uh, let's look at some examples. Oh, uh, it, if we're going to have signed numbers and unsigned numbers, well, obviously... Uh, four and five, if we have two positive values, we should be able to still add two positive numbers if they're expressed using this scheme with signed values. So let's see here down. What do I got here? Uh, six bit values, right? So what happens? I have a four and a five, and I want to add them together. Does it still work? Gee, I certainly hope so, right? Well, here's a four in binary, and here's a five in binary, and you can see me working it out over here and uh, calculating how that works given the uh, 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 the place values of these one bits that are ones, and I'm showing the carries of the addition over here. So let's add them up. Zero plus one is one with no carry. Zero and zero is zero with no carry. One and one is zero right here with a carry. One plus zero plus zero is one with no carry, and zeros and zeros and so on ends up with this. So did we get nine? I certainly hope so, because you got two zeros and a one and another two zeros and a one, which gives you these two zeros for the uh, place values of those guys. The one in here 
represents this eight, right? There's your eights column and your ones column. So you add them all together and you get nine. So that works. All right, let's see if the negative values work, right? Well, given that scheme, this then is negative four. And if you don't believe me, add up all the place values for these bits and you'll get negative four. Same thing will happen here if you add them all together and you uh, rep to represent negative five. We should be able to just add these together, just like we've been doing all along. So zero plus one is one with no carry. That's one with no carry. That's one with no carry. One and one is zero with a carry. One, one and one is one with a carry. One, one and one is one, and it has a carry. And we have this extra bit over here. We're going to throw these away. We call that a truncation, right? Whenever you're adding things together in, in computer, physical machines have a finite number of pieces. It has a finite number of bits in its memory and so on. It, as we'll see, truncating and throwing away these things on the left is actually uh, an important thing to do in certain circumstances, all right? So uh, for now, let's just uh, accept that we're throwing them away because we have a, phys uh, a physically limited machine, in this case, that has only six-bit values. And when you add too many things together, you just throw the thing away. Now look what happens. If you throw this bit away over here, What's left over here? You got negative 32 plus 16 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, right? I should have shown the 8 as 0 here. So you're going to add all these place values together again, and there's no 8 is my point. And you're going to get negative 9. All right, that's pretty cool. So if we threw this thing away. Like I said, it's important to do that. <laughs> and we'll see why this, uh, how this applies as we go. You get the right answer, okay? And that's key. <laughs> you add these two things together, you get your negative 9, that's great. And you just throw away the extra junk. Perfect. What happens if I add negative 1 plus 1? Well, I should get 0, right? <laughs> that would be nice. Let's run another quick check here. So here is your add ends. Here's a negative 1. We saw that earlier. And a 1, that's easy. Uh, set the least significant bit to 1 for the 1's column and 0 all the rest out. What happens if I add all this together? Well, I got 1 and 1 and 0 with a carry. 1 and 1 and 0 with a carry. 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 God goes along and we throw these things away on the left again and truncate it. Well, guess what? Again, we end up with the right answer. That's great provided that we throw away the stuff that we end up, uh, uh, the, the carries that come out of the most significant bit. So in order for us to be able to function and do this, it's critical that we throw away and truncate the carries that come out of the most significant bits, all right? If you actually work this one out and you don't throw this away, you will notice that you still get negative nine whether this is truncated or not, right? Because you'll end up with a negative 64 represented by this bit and a positive 32 and a positive 16 plus 4 plus 8. You'll still get negative 9. Go ahead and do the back of the envelope calculation. You'll see that's true. The one down here, absolutely it is not true. You must truncate, truncate this to get the right answer, okay? You can truncate this one, but you must truncate here. Therefore, this statement down here. Okay, so now that we know how to have a positive number, we know how to represent negative numbers, how do you create these things, all right? You know, how do I, how do I create a negative one from a one, right? How do I negate the value of a number? Well, what does it mean to do this? Well, the way I like to think about it, you invert all the bits, which is how you create something called the ones complement, right? And then you add one to that ones complement, and you end up with the twos complement, all right? So let's look and see how that works. Let's say I got the number four. It's represented here, all right? As a signed binary integer number, that's what you end up with here. The fours column is set, and nothing else is. That's four, right? So how do we then flip all the bits? Well, for every zero becomes a one. Zero becomes a one here. This one here becomes a zero right here. These zeros and all the rest of the remaining zeros over here become all these uh, ones over here, right? That's the ones complement. You flip all the bits. Now, I need to add one to that in order to then end up with the twos complement value that I'm trying to calculate, right? So if I add one and one to zero with a carry, that's zero with a carry, that's one, that's one, 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 and that kind of checks out, that's nice. 
right? The least significant bid is a zero. It's an even number. It should be even. That's that's good. And this bit over here is set to a one, representing a negative value. If this bit pattern is to be interpreted as a signed binary number, which by definition I said it is. So we have a negative value that's an even number. So a quick back of the a quick sanity check looks okay. And then you can just add them all up using the um, place values like I did up here. And you can clearly see that that uh, adds up to negative four. You could also take this value and add five to it and see if we end up with one because that's easy to recognize, right? So here we go. Let's here's my negative four, right? That we just calculated. Let's add five to it. How do we represent five? Well, that's actually a one in the fours place plus a one over here in the ones place, right? You end up with five, right? So just add them together. See what happens. We got a one here, uh, zero and zero, zero, one, one, and zero with a carry, 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 zero with a carry. And again, we throw away, we truncate the result. We end up with this over here, which is obviously the value one. Again, if and only if we remember to truncate the stuff coming out of the left. All right. Note that this is, of course, symmetric. No matter what you've got, you can calculate the negative of it by flipping the bits and add one. Now, if we have flipped the bits and add one to calculate a negative four up here, and we got all ones followed by these two zeros, right? It better be true that if we want to calculate the negative of negative four, we better get positive four back again, right? So let's see what happens there. Well, there's the negative four. We were just looking at it, okay? And here's what happens if we flip all the bits, right? We got all ones followed by two zeros. If you flip the bits, you got all zeros followed by two ones. That, again, is called the ones complement of negative four, okay, in this case. And then we need to add one to it. So one and one is zero with a carry. That's zero with a carry. That's one and all these zeros. And this, again, gives us back our four, right? One in the fours place value here and nothing anywhere else. That equals four. So this is how to represent binary integers using the twos complement numbering scheme and how to convert between positive values and negative values. Thanks for watching.